Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Hotspot. We are so excited to be here today. Now, you're going to see a couple familiar faces on the screen right now. Right on my left right here, we have Portia. Say what's up, Portia. Uh, and then, of course, on my bottom left right here, this is Tyler. You guys remember Tyler. Oh, yeah. No. Love your NASA hat. <laughs> now, on my bottom right, right over here, you are going to see Nathan. Hey. Nathan's fantastic. Everybody loves him. And then over here on my other side, this is Emma. Hi. That's awesome. It's great to have all you guys here. You are all fantastic. And I just can't wait to hear from you guys. I know last week we, we had a great conversation. We had a really good time just talking. And I heard from a lot of different people, uh, even adults who just loved hearing the student perspective on different things and, and what you guys have to say. So uh, how have you guys been doing this week? Um, pretty good so far. Great. Uh, you know, a little bit of schoolwork, but I yep. never heard anybody. <laughs> Or maybe that is did, true. I don't know. And it might even help you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it never hurt anybody. Well, it hurts yeah. sometimes, but <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I, I said this to uh, some of our leaders, our youth leaders the other day. I was like, I feel like my days are going by, like they're taking forever, but the weeks seem really fast. Does that like oh, yeah, resonate sure. with yeah. you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was looking at the calendar yesterday. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. it's already like January 20th, like it's a crazy. week. One more week in January is over. It's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. Like it's been three weeks of January. It's already trying to one up 2020. And, you know, I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. Oh, man. Anyway, so we're going to have a conversation today um, and we're going to be talking about fear. And we're going to be talking about emotions because this is something we've actually been talking about in our student ministry. And we've been going through this series called Vibes, where we're talking about different emotions that try to control us. And so today we wanted to focus on one that is like so prevalent in our world today, which is fear, 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 right? Like it's, it's just everywhere. And so I wanted to start by asking, could you guys tell us like, what is the one thing that you're most afraid of? Like, what's your number one fear? Why don't we start with Portia? Scared of like spiders and snakes. Spider. Okay, which one's more scary, spiders or snakes? Um, snakes. Snakes. So you're not moving to Australia. No. (laughs) It's crazy. Yeah, snakes are pretty scary. Tyler, what was your number one fear? I think uh, Tyler's glitching out a little bit there. Uh, So definitely tornadoes. Oh, there it is. Tornadoes. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. You used to live in Georgia, right? Yeah, no, we definitely experienced them a bunch. I just, uh, I can't do them. Yeah, that's that's terrifying. I've never been in a tornado. But uh, Nathan, what's your number one fear? Uh, number one? I don't really know. I, what I can think of right now is like, sometimes like seeing other people's blood gives me the heebie-jeebies. Okay. But I wouldn't, yeah, I don't know. Also, like, I'm not really scared of heights, but if I ever went skydiving, I would 100% be scared then. I mean, if you weren't scared at all, that might be... Yeah, maybe, maybe that's an issue, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I don't care what happens. We're like, okay, let's talk yeah. about that. No, <laughs> absolutely. And Emma, what's your number one fear? Um, Probably being in the dark and having, like, my feet near underneath my bed. Having your feet oh, underneath your good. bed? Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared that someone's gonna be under my bed and just grab me. Uh, okay, so is it being in the dark and having your feet under the bed, or just dark, also separately having my feet under the bed? Yeah, that. Okay, so those are number two: darkness, very understandable, and yeah. um, having your feet being near under the bed because somebody might reach out and grab them. That's really interesting, Emma. Thanks for sharing and being so honest. I think if I were to say my number one fear is I get pretty terrified of heights, although roller coasters and rides do not bother me. So I don't know why, but if I'm like, I used to live in an apartment building and I would look over the edge sometimes just like on my balcony and just like my whole body inside would seize up. And I was like, ah, like it would just, it was terrible. No, I definitely agree that there's a difference. There's a difference between like a ride or a water slide that's high and just like looking over a cliff. Big, big difference. Even just like a tall ladder, like being on scaffolding. I was in scaffolding at the church and I, you know, I was like, I'm not afraid of heights. I can handle this. And it, <laughs> it was recently and I was up there and I was literally like shaking, holding onto the edges like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But fear is something we all experience and fear is something that we, we all live with and have part of our lives. And so uh, what, let's say this, 
tell us something that you were afraid of when you were a kid that you're not afraid of at all now. Now, for Emma, she was probably afraid of having her feet grabbed from under the bed when she was a kid and still now. But try to think of so scary. <laughs> something that you used to think was so scary that now you're like, I don't even understand why I was afraid of that. Uh, just hey, anybody. I, I can go first on this one. Um, kind of like Emma's where it's like pitch black. I could not do it. Like mm. I'd be I remember we went camping and it was the first time I ever like slept in pitch black and I would stick my hands out and I couldn't see my hands in the tent. And I was terrified of that. So like for a good chunk of my life, I was terrified of like pitch black. And mm -hmm. then that, and then that just that fear evolved to like robbers at night. So I was needed <laughs> out of the nightlight and stuff. So, yeah. But now they don't stand a chance against you. So why be afraid? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now I could practically live in pitch dark if I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just so like that now. Just like Batman. Maybe. Wait, oh, yeah. what? No. Anybody else? What, what were you used to be afraid of? And not anymore. I also used to be super terrified of the dark. Mm. Yeah, not anymore, but it was a while. I was just super scared. It's definitely common for kids. Like I understand that too. <laughs> I, when I grew up, I lived in a, yeah. I didn't live in a basement, but my, my, my bedroom was in the basement and there was no windows. And so it was always pitch black. So I got so used to it really quickly. So I guess it didn't bother me as much, but what about one of you other guys? See, I would definitely say the dark, but um, I'm still like a little bit afraid of it. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, but definitely when it's like pitch black yeah. and there's a thunderstorm, mm. I couldn't handle it. I, I thought I was going to die that day. Yeah, thunderstorms, uh, they still scare me to this day. Um, you might have heard that story before, but I don't want to tell it right now because I'm already getting scared. <laughs> Emma, what, what is something you used to be afraid of that not so much anymore? Um, I used to be really scared of snakes. Snakes. But now you just have pet snakes, right? No, <laughs> I want a pet snake though. Really? Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, Porsche's already like, oh, I can't I even, be able to do it. Yeah, why, even why would you want like a, a hamster or something like that? Like that's so much fun. I don't yeah, something, something not vicious. <laughs> that does sound like more fun. I don't snake though. <laughs> I don't know me neither. I saw a video the other day come up on Facebook of these people where they, they they found this dead coconut tree and there was a bunch of like vipers living in it and they cut it down and pulled them out with their hands and I was like, what are you doing? Like oh, I was so nervous watching. That's all. nuts. Oh, it was crazy. But anyways, I, there. <laughs> yeah, I saw this video and it, it was scary. It was this massive snake and it was like a pet snake and it opened, it, like it went up like this and it opened the door. And then the door flew open. It went through the door. I can't. No way. No. <laughs> Once I saw that, I was like, Could I'm you never going to hear that? another snake again. Just like, <laughs> no you can't way. even close your doors. Yeah. Like, what? It's just, it's coming oh through. Oh my God. That yeah. is Portia's worst nightmare. Imagine that in the dark. Or Emma, <laughs> it's going to grab you from under the bed. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, that's that's fun, but in, you know we all have those kinds of fears. But in the reality of the what what we're facing right now in in our world is we have different kinds of fears than those. Like those are you know the, those different kinds of fears that are our top fears of things that make us maybe jump or feel that. Th but there's other kinds of fears that we're experiencing a lot right now because there's so much uncertainty in our world right now. And so, you know, I think one of the big things is uh, you know fear of the unknown. You know, we're, we're not understanding everything that's going on. And there's so many different stories and voices on either side of every issue when it comes to everything to do with COVID, right? And so I think that can create a lot of fear. And so I'm wondering, like, maybe if you guys can talk a little bit about um, what, how you've seen that manifest in the world. Like, have you seen it in your parents? Like, have you seen it in teachers? Have you seen it in yourselves? Like, what has that kind of fear been like in your life? What have you noticed? What have you seen? definitely like friends like you know like you ask to like in the summer like you ask to hang out with someone and they're like no covid like i can't do it mm. and mm. and also like teachers like i've had teachers that wear two masks oh wow school, not just what? one so yeah definitely i've seen it yeah, yeah I mean, um oh, sorry you go you, go you know no it's okay it's okay <laughs> Um, I've seen it like lots in just like out in public in general, you can tell like how tense and fearful people mm. are like if you're out like grocery shopping or something. Yeah, people are always super cautious. I mean, some people aren't but it's really like obvious when like some people like are just living in fear right now. Right. And you see you feel the tension of it. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I totally know what you're talking about. Like I like to go for walks and I feel like just walking down the road, obviously we need to be smart and to have some of those, you know, social distancing rules and masks like that. Yeah. that that's a good thing for keeping people safe, but then just walking past somebody on the sidewalk, like I see fear in their eyes where I'm like, like, yeah, let's distance and be smart. But at the same time, I'm like, you don't have to be afraid of me. Like we're just, Hey, how's it going? Right. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I would, I would definitely agree on Porsche's part. Even just like, I, I don't know what it is, but society is like so uptight these days, you know, like, I don't know if COVID has a part in doing that, but even like watching YouTube videos and people doing pranks, nobody, nobody wants it. Hmm. People are just, just a little more wound up than maybe yeah. they have their guard up. They're ready. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I think that's a good point. Like that's what these kind of uncertain times and fear does to us is it makes us mm -hmm. tense up right so yeah what have you what have you seen and noticed emma um mine is kind of the same as porsche's just like out in public seeing people being like really tense and cautious mm. do you think that a season like this do you think it has an effect on our relationships i think yeah, it does mm. sure. oh, so yeah. what ways have you guys noticed that well, well just definitely not seeing a lot of people right yeah, exactly. Like, mm. I've had friends that I haven't seen for months. And yeah. Obviously, we're not going to be as close yeah. um, just because you haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's one. And uh, maybe, like, like, disagreeing about certain stuff, mm. or, like, certain stuff that's yeah, happening. Yeah. Like, you might have different viewpoints on stuff. So, yeah. like, I try not to bring that up because it's never really, like, a good topic of conversation. But sometimes it yeah. does happen. Sometimes there's disagreements. Yeah, so there's that as well. I think that's a great point because I have felt that fear. I've had the fear of talking about or taking a side on any of the issues in COVID because I just at this point don't want to have a conflict or an argument or, you know, ruin a friendship or a conversation because I'm fearful of trying to be able to just have some sort of middle ground where people, because you know what I mean? People get so tense about yeah. whether you're on this side or that side. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to sometimes have a mutual respect. And so uh, I, I love that you said that Nathan, because I have felt that that fear of, mm -hmm. of conflict and just taking any sort of side or any sort of stand because people are so yeah. on edge about that. Right. For sure. Yeah. And like when it's the other way around, like when somebody brings up with me and they might not be on the same um, like viewpoint as I am, like I try to, you know, like see where they're coming from, like, mm. you know, try to be respectful about it. And I try to kind of like steer the conversation away from it a bit. Mm. Of course. Yeah. It, sometimes it's good to have those conversations as well. Like it's not always yeah. perfect to steer away from it, but yeah. True. Absolutely true. Yeah, for sure. I, I know. I, I think those are some great points there, Nathan. Have you guys noticed like uh, any sort of fear within your actual families? Is is there something maybe in your parents or homes or grandparents? Have you guys felt anything like that? Definitely. Oh, yeah. So like for me, it's not necessarily fear about COVID, but fear about like opening things up again. So mm -hmm. the church right now, we're all online and it's pretty stressful with my parents. Mm -hmm. Like figuring out if we're going to go back and what to do that yeah. they like, there's a lot of fear in that, which is fair. Like that makes sense. So mm -hmm. definitely notice that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel what? like in my family, there's like a lot of fear, like for going back to work because like half my family works at the movie theater. <laughs> right. So we're all like going there. So if there's like one case, that's half our family that has the chance of getting it and then bringing it home and then spreading it to who knows. So it's, there's yeah. a lot there for sure yeah yeah and that can weigh heavy on you right just because there's so much unknown no that's that's true you your dad has the the movie theater and you guys work there you know it's easy to not think about that or put it into real perspective how much of an effect that can have on your lives right yeah yeah yeah, I, I, you know, I've noticed that a bit in home life too. My, my wife, she works at the bank. And uh, so she, she gets a lot of interesting stories uh, about people who come in who are very fearful or just like wanting to, I'm going to cash out all my money and put it in my mattress because <laughs> I don't know, it's going to like, okay. Um, but you know, it's just so interesting how people react in some of those situations and what it can kind of do to us. Right. So yeah. I know for us, we're, you know, your students, you're in high school. It's a little different for you than a number of the adults in, out there because you're just not having some of the same experiences you know it's not like you have investments in the stock market and you're worried that if those crash like what's you know you 
you're not even thinking about that, but you have different perspectives on that. So I'm wondering though, but as a high school student, uh, what are some things that you think that you can do to help bring peace to your family? How can you actually help your parents? How can you help your family, your siblings? How can you bring some of that calm into your world? Like what, what can you or other high schoolers do to actually be a light amongst them? Well, like for us, I guess, like one of the stressful situations in during COVID would be school. So um, like having kind of like a positive outlook on school, like I know a lot of people might be like more stressed than usual with the online stuff. It might be like a bit more challenging, but um, like just like recognizing like this is what you have now, this is what you're given and uh, just like try to make the best of it. Mm. Um, Like if you have that kind of mindset about what, what you're given, that might be able to rub off on your family, your friends or whatever, because they'll see like, Oh, like this might yeah. be a challenging time for you, but mm-hmm. you're giving it your best. So maybe I should give it my best as well. And like other situations that's like good. work or whatever. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I feel like yeah, a sure. thing that we can do is just like, keep checking up on people, making sure everyone's doing okay. Like ask how someone's doing mm-hmm. and just like keep checking up on people. For sure. And there's yeah. a difference between how's it going and, How's it going? Like, no, really? Yeah. Like, how no, are you doing? Real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I would say for me, distracting myself. So if I'm like super stressed out and fearing um, due dates or something, I would do something that will get my mind off of it. So like, even just like watching a movie as a family, mm. like do something with your family that will get everyone's mindset um, kind of like replenished so that mm. the stress levels are lower and uh, there's not as much fear. So you go back into that with a better mm-hmm. mindset. Yeah. yeah just having some fun together right yeah, sometimes you gotta do one, that actually and like every family might have their different way of doing that like my family like will play exactly yeah for sure a board game or something like for you you watch a movie that's great like, sure. that that works for you yeah so, like yeah there's like other ways that you can do that and just to like um mm. gear more towards your family like what you like like maybe it's going on a hike or something mm. that of course. would work yeah. as well That's awesome. And you know what? I think a lot of times as students, you might kind of wait for your parents to be like, this is what we're going to do. But hey, I mean, if you're a student out there and you haven't been having these experiences with your family, maybe you'd be the one to be like, hey, mom, dad, like whoever it is, uh, sibling, I'd love to watch a movie with you. Let's go for a walk together. Let's play a board game. I bet you if you were to go to some of your family members and say, let's do this, they'd be like, okay, like that sounds awesome. Yeah. But I I love what Nathan said about having a different outlook on school, um, because I think that um, school and online schooling is a huge part of what makes students fearful right now, because it's different and it's change, right? And you're trying to figure it out and you don't like it as much as attending school, but saying, no, I'm going to have a positive outlook because I can't change the situation and I'm going to make the best of it. Dude, I think that is amazing advice. So thank you so much for saying that. Um, I've told many people this before, but you know, be a little more like Nathan. I think that's fantastic. Uh, no, that's really, really good don't, advice. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think you're awesome, but that's okay. no, really, that is good advice. And I really appreciate that you said that because I think the, the better outlook that you have on that, it could rub off on the rest of your families and your parents yeah. and help yeah. them to know some pieces. If they see you like being like, you know what, it's not my favorite, but I'm going to try my hardest. Like that could be a really big impact on them. So sure. that's I didn't mention this when I was talking about it, but like a way you can do that is just by not dwelling on the negative, mm-hmm. like a, a negative of online school would be like, Oh, you can't see your friends. Um, it's hard to like communicate with your teacher, but like a positive would be like, sometimes you get to sleep in a bit more. Mm. Um, sometimes like you don't have exams. That's a positive. Sure. Uh, mm. Like, yeah, it's that kind of stuff. Dwell on those. Yeah. I love it. That'll make that a lot easier. That's great advice. So uh, let's um, let's go to a positive note for a second since Nate just said that. What's one thing about this year that you guys are really excited about? What's something that you're really hopeful for for the future? Oh, it's a big one. Um, I would definitely say uh, this summer. I'm pretty looking forward to this summer. Like, obviously, it's, it's pretty far away. I don't really know how it's all going to work out or – if uh, things are going to be open again, but I'm pretty, I'm looking forward to this summer, this winter season. It was difficult. There's no skiing. You can't really do much, but mm-hmm. summer is going to be 
I, I'm, yeah. I call it. Yeah. Now, are you going to have your G2 by this summer, Tyler? I am. I'm getting it in August, but I already have my go. boat license because you can get it when you're 12. So now, wow, J- July and August, I'm, I'm whipping boating month. So you're looking forward to the summer. That's all. I'm always looking That's forward right. to summer unless it is summer. Yeah. Then I'm just looking forward to what it actually is presently. Um, I love <laughs> summer. What about some of you other guys? What's something you're looking forward to? What are you hopeful for? I'm in the exact same boat as Tyler. Every day I think about going to the beach in the summer and like mm-hmm. going to the cottage and I get, yeah. I get my G2. I, I'm technically earliest I can get is like February 28th, but probably not going to be then, yeah. but yeah. hopefully be, definitely before summer. I'll be able to get it and that'll just make it so much better. We're so yeah, Canadian yeah, just being like, I can't wait till winter's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, Emma. I'm literally in the same boat. Mm. I'm also going to have V2 for this summer. So I feel like it's going to be pretty lit. Lots of V trips. So yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be lots of fun. Yeah. I love the summer too. Emma, what's, what's, are you going to say summer too? Well, for me, it's just, I'm excited for when restrictions are loosened up the so then I can, I can see people. Mm, yeah totally that's and there's nothing wrong with looking forward to that you know you can still make the most out of the season we're in and not be overwhelmed by fear but say i am looking forward to being able to see people again because i love them and i miss them right Mm -hmm. for sure and there's nothing wrong with that you know as long as it's a healthy balance between you know what's real and what's smart and what's wise and also looking forward to that and you know what we could take from from this is to be a little more grateful for some of those interactions, for some of those experiences and some of those people. And uh, I think that would be something that uh, would be really positive for us to, we can look back on the season and not take some things that we used to for granted. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited about the summer too. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you guys sharing that. So, so talking about what we're thankful for or uh, not thankful for, sorry, but looking forward to, um, why don't we then actually share one thing that we've been thankful for? So I already kind of said it a second ago, but you know, we've talked about, there's been this fear. We've talked about what we're excited about, but like, what's something that in this past season you've been thankful for? Because I think if we look back and say, well, I've been really thankful for this or that, that that could be a really great antidote to, to fear when you remember the good stuff. Right. Yeah. Something I'm definitely thankful for is all the friends that I have, because I know I was friends with like a lot of people that I'm friends with now before COVID happened. So I'm super thankful to like have them in my life and be as close as I am with them. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like spending time with family, like take it as you want. Sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes they can get on your nerves, but for the most part, um, it, like spending time with family a lot more has been beneficial. Like, mm. um, yeah, it's definitely been pretty fun. And yeah, just like COVID season as a whole, um, like last summer was really fun um just doing certain things like uh, going to cottage beach um that was still possible with covid so Mm. i was very grateful for that yeah i feel that because we i felt like we were still able to have a good summer too but it was still slower like it was there was more rest and a more intentionality to that rest in the summer and so even though you know, I was looking forward to the fall and what we were gearing up for with youth and connecting with people. Um, there was a certain amount of, of rest that came this summer, whereas normally for, for me in student ministries, the summer can be crazy busy because we're doing event after event. We got to do this. We got to do that. And we're planning for the fall. But I actually found I'm super thankful for what we were able to go through that last summer as well, because there was a lot of great rest. So that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Tyler, Emma, what are you guys thankful for? I would say I'm thankful for um, my family, kind of like Hooker said, um, and even like what I touched on last uh, last question or the question before, like just having a family that you can hang out with, because or even siblings. Like I'm really thankful that I have three other siblings that keep me up like crazy, but it's it's good, you know. Um, so yeah, definitely family. Hmm. And about you, Emma, what are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful for getting to meet some more friends this year Mm. and last year too. Mm. And I'm glad I was able to go to youth a lot more Mm. and enjoy it more because I had more people to talk to. Mm. Well, you know what, Emma, we were thankful to have you as well because it's been awesome having you around. So 
That's fantastic. No, that's great. And, you know, I, I ask what they're thankful of and I want to hear from you guys because being thankful is an antidote to so many things. Like when you remember what you have to be thankful for yeah. and remember the good that you have and what God has done in your life and all those different kinds of things, I think it really helps with fear, with negativity, with, uh, with anything that's going on in that sort of negative part of your life, because it, it forces you to examine yourself and be like, no, actually there is some really great stuff. Right. And to just stop that negativity in its tracks. Right. So that's really good. That's really awesome. Well, I really appreciate hearing from you guys and hearing some of the things that you guys have to, uh, have to share with us. And I think you guys bring a lot of value and I want to encourage you if you're a high school student, um, we would love to hear from you. We would love for you to speak up a little more and to speak out and to be a part of something like this, because I know a lot of times the world can make you feel that if you're not an adult, then maybe you don't have anything to offer, but that's not true. I think you guys have genuine value to bring not only to our society, but to other people. And so that's one of the things that I love about Hotspot and about just having this conversation is the chance for students to speak to other students and just have a moment to be real and to have a moment to see that there's others who are experiencing and feeling some of the same things that they're feeling. So I wanted to say thank you to you guys. And uh, I'm really excited for uh, what we have ahead of us and what we have to look forward to and uh, for the continuation of stuff like this, because I think it brings a lot of value because of you guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. It's been a good You're time. Welcome. For sure. Yes. It's awesome. Well, this is hot spot episode two, where we've been talking about fear and what that's been kind of looking like in our lives and our society right now. But I just wanted to encourage you that, uh, that fear doesn't have to be the boss of you, that, that there is a God who loves you, who has a great plan for us, who has a great future for you. And that through him, we can know peace in our lives. And so we just want to thank you for checking this out, for listening. And we can't wait to see you next Friday when a new episode of Hotspot comes out. Hope you have a great day.